Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mean here. Today we're going to do another uh, build video. Uh, we're actually using uh, two mods to do this. We're doing the Elder Arcana mod as well as Call of the Wild. Now I've already done a build video for Valerie. Uh, two of them, matter of fact, I've done an unmodded build for those that are playing the vanilla version of the game as well as a modded build. But again, that wasn't quite right. And the reason that wasn't quite right was because if you actually use both of these mods, Call of the Wild specifically, uh, when you start the game, the modder has put in differences for many of the characters. Uh, some of are, are literally class changes, uh, certainly um, ability as well as skill point changes. So that's what we're actually doing today. Uh, so I wanted to show you what that entails for someone like Valerie. Now Valerie uh, normally uh, in the vanilla version of the game plays out as a tower shield specialist. She is a fighter subclass. Uh, she literally has this massive freaking door that she uses as a shield. It's ridiculously looking. And she uh, uses that because she used to be a uh, paladin in training, which is complete bullshit because paladins in training that are no longer paladins become weak fighters. Not just fighters, weak fighters. So the fact that she starts off as a fighter was bullshit. So the modders said, you know what, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Let's actually change some stuff up. So what did they do? Well, she, she changed her, or he or she, I should say, changed their stats. So while she usually had a strength, I want to say a 14 or 15, which is kind of lame sauce, they bumped it now to 18. She had a con normally of 19, which is retardedly high, uh, knocked that down to 14. So we kind of swapped those two stats around, basically. Um, her dexterity, I can't remember if it was 10 or not. Uh, certainly her intelligence was like a 9. So she was dumb as a box of rocks. Um, so literally having intelligence of 13 is much better, and it actually goes towards the, the feats that they gave her at the start. Uh, I can't remember if her wisdom changed at all, but her charisma they kept the same, and thank God for that, because Valerie is hard-coded in the game as being one of your advisor choices. The choices for what she would advise on uh, key off of charisma. So if her charisma was lowered, then she would actually suck as being your advisor. So that's some good news that they kept that the same. And again, this would be the type of stats you might expect for a typical paladin. Well, she's not a paladin anymore. She's not even a fighter, a tower shield specialist anymore. She's what's called a vindictive bastard. This is a paladin that basically uh, thumbed their nose, if you will, at their deity choices. They're just like, you know what? Fuck you. I'm about my team, not about you. And when you look at the class abilities, it'll make a hell of a lot more sense. So first, let's talk about what they gave her at level one. As a human, she got two feats to pick. So they gave her shield focus and combat expertise. Now shield focus, you'll notice that she's using a normal heavy shield. She does not have training as a vindictive bastard in the tower shield. So uh, gone are the days of, of lugging around your barn door. Uh, you actually can get that if you still want to, but it's, it's silly and you would never want to do that really anyway. Uh, tower shield specialists, sure, made sense for them, but for this type of character, no. Nah, sword and board's the way it is. And she's no longer a bastard sword wielding son of a bitch. She's using a traditional uh, longsword. Matter of fact, they gave her a masterwork longsword right at the start, which is pretty cool. She's wearing like banded uh, mail armor, so she's in the heavy armor still. She's very tough, not as tough as she would have been, but she's certainly not as penalized as she was either. So if you wanted someone that can literally hold her own from level one on up, Valor is your go-to now, which is pretty nice, I must say. Uh, and part of that is the fact that she literally has a nice bonus to her strength instead of that 15, which she started with before, which was that's like a plus two. That would have lowered it two points. That would have been like a four instead of a six. And it'd be even worse because when, when you're a tower shield specialist and you're using the tower shield, it imposes a penalty to your swing until you get to like level five or ten or some shit. So again, this is definitely moving in the right direction of her being a capable combatant as well as a frontline tank. Now... With those two feats that they gave her, the shield focus and combat expertise, one makes sense, again, giving her back some extra armor that she's missing because she's no longer using the tower shield. Again, that's cool. I have no problem with this. Combat expertise she would never have been able to get because in the original iteration of her character, she'd have an intelligence of nine. Notice how uh, combat expertise requires an intelligence of 13, which she has. This is a toggle. You turn it on. It penalizes your swing to gives you a bonus to your armor. For every minus one to your attack bonus, uh, and combat maneuver checks, you get a plus one to your armor class. So again, by the end of her build, I want to say she can get like a minus four or minus six or some such, and she can get like a, like a plus four or plus six to her armor as a result. Total bro move, because this would be the way that I would want to build this type of character. Now let's actually talk about what the Vindictive Bastard gets that the Tower Shield Specialist doesn't. You know, of course, right off the bat, she has something called Vindictive Smite. It's like a smite maneuver, like the Paladins get, but it's different. Vindictive Smite differs in that 
while you get the buff to your swing and you get the buff to your damage based on your they call it paladin levels it's actually the vindictive bastard levels but basically your charisma modifier your, your bonus here uh, goes towards your swing uh and then you, you get like a, a a bonus to your damage based on your paladin level uh the vindictive bastard gains a deflection bonus equal to your charisma bonus against that target that's awesome uh, but the trick for this one is is that they don't have to be evil, they don't have to be neutral or good. It has nothing to do with anything like that. It has to do with, did you hurt me or my team? Until one of your teammates takes damage, or you, you can't use Vindictive Smite. Okay? But it's cool. And it, again, it, thematically, it makes sense for what this character is. If this was not pen and paper, if this isn't something that wasn't uh, originally in Pathfinder, fucking kudos to you, sir, for putting this together, because this is awesome. This would be the kind of paladin I would play in a pen and paper setting. I always hated the fact that, that paladins always had that lawful good. You must be lawful good. Oh my god, well, how dare you not be lawful good, you son of a bitch. Uh, this one gets the ability to cast spells. This one has a lot of paladin-like abilities. They're not quite as good as paladins in a variety of ways, but in other ways they're not as restricted as paladins too, which I totally dig. Let's actually show you what we're talking about. For example, uh, first, uh, their the typical weapons of familiarity, simple martial weapons, all armor types, and all shields except tower shields. Right off the bat, they're fucking solid armor, a solid swinging uh, character. Notice they have Detect Magic because, again, this is a character that's going to be able to cast spells. So, again, unlike the original version of Valerie, she will actually have spell casting ability based off of Charisma. Fucking awesome. She has these Vindictive Smites. Notice how it goes all the way up to six more of them, so seven total. Uh, there's ways to get ex additional uses of these, I believe. I'll show you that once we get into leveling the character up. But by and large, seven is more than what I need. And also, uh, side note here. Uh, for those people that may have like a, 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 the ear of a dev or even the modder that did this particular mod, uh, I am never a fan of when you see, here's your first one and here's your second, third, fourth, all the way up to seventh, where they literally say one, two, three, when it's really, they mean an, an additional one, an additional two, an additional three. You really you should make this one or just don't label it at all and then call this two, three, four, five, six, seven, quite frankly, because it gets confusing. When you see six, you're like, oh, I get six of them. No, you don't you get six more of them. So again, I, it's just a bugaboo of mine. Notice, uh, unlike a paladin who would get their charisma modifier added to their fortitude, their reflex, and their will saves, all of them, which is one of the reasons the paladins are fucking awesome, these guys have what's called faded grace at level two, and it allows you to pick the feat, great fortitude, or iron will, or lightning reflexes as you choose. And it really is just a free feat. So if you wanted uh, to increase your reflexes, which are going to straight up suck because she has no dexterity, and reflexes is like the lowest category for the saves that she will get points in, you can do so. You can give it a little juice here. I would not recommend that. I'm going to recommend either Great Fortitude, which is the one I'll grab, or Iron Will, which you could grab as well, because Fortitude, again, is her uh, big bonus here, and same with Will over here. Now, she doesn't have a lot in way of, way of wisdom, so there's a way to fucking make that higher using Charisma, and I'll show you that trick a little bit later on. But again, pick one of those two would be my advice to you. But again, I, I can't tell you how to make your character, really. I can just tell you how I make my character. I'm going to go with Great Fortitude because she's going to be in the front ranks and Fortitude saves are going to be her cup of tea. Right? And notice that because these are really nothing more than the Great Fortitude feat, for example, then that means that this unlocks the ability to unlock improved Great Fortitude or whatever the hell it's called, Greater Great Fortitude. Um, so instead of it being a plus two, it could be a plus four. And again, so that would be the same with Iron Will and Lightning Reflexes. Whichever of those three you unlock, that really is the feat that we're talking about. More than that, and she'll get these things called spiteful tenacity and notice um she gets the die hard feat for free basically um, and again for those of you that don't know what this is this literally is if she's taken to zero in a combat round she doesn't die immediately she doesn't fall to the ground unconscious she has one more round to do something which means probably chuck a potion or someone can come over quickly and heal her up before she finally kills the fuck over but it gives her a chance to be like fuck you death uh, swing here it goes bam he dies and i die then i stand the fuck back up so again, kind of cool, and again, falls with her, you know, vindictive bastard personality as far as I'm concerned. Notice she also gets this thing called Gang Up, and it gets an upgraded version of it called Swift Justice later. Now these two, since they're basically the same, it's just this is a move action, and at this point it becomes a swift action. Uh, so it's faster, she can move in, attack, still in the same round now. Uh, but this one here takes her movement away, but what this does is it allows her to use her uh, vindictive smite and basically give half of the buff to her teammates within range which is pretty nice. So a bonus to their swing and a bonus to their damage based on her paladin levels for the damage and based on her vindictive bastard, excuse me, level uh, for her damage as well as her charisma modifier for her swing. So again, 
pump her charisma, make sure she goes vindictive bastard probably all the way. And that little buff will be really, really nice for you and your team. It's just straight up. And if you haven't noticed something already, it's really going to key in when we start talking about this bottom list down here. But let's let's keep going on. So again, Swift Justice is just more of the same. It's just, like I said, it's a swift action versus the move action. Notice she gets stalwart. This was something that she had in the past, I believe, as well for a tower shield specialist. For those of you that don't know, this is the, the opposite, if you will, version of what the little reflex ninja bastards always get. You know, I always bitch about how they get the ability to evade damage. What does that mean? If they make the reflex save for a spell that would do like half damage, they take no damage. Well, this is the opposite in the way that if it's for fortitude and will saves. If she makes them and they uh, cut the damage in half, she would actually take no damage. And that's cool. It's not quite the same because there's more reflex saves for you know half damage spells out there. But there is still definitely fortitude saves. I don't know about will, but there's definitely fortitude saves out there that are like, Dude, make the fortitude check and you'll take half damage. Again, uh, a really nice upgrade for someone that's going to be in the front ranks tanking it up like a goddamn boss. Uh, from there, uh, notice he gets an uh, aura of self-righteousness, not just righteousness, self-righteousness, because again, she's a vindictive bastard. She gets an immunity, or it's a damage reduction, excuse me, a five against either lawful, uh, sorry, DR5 slash lawful or good, I th I'm assuming you pick at that level, or maybe it's based on what kind of character you are. Are you a lawful character or are you a good character? She's lawful neutral. I'm guessing that means she has DR5 lawful, uh, which means only if it's a lawful weapon will it penetrate that DR5. Uh, nor she's got immunity to compulsion spells and spell like abilities at that level. That's fucking money. That's really big saves for her will saves. And her will saves are not the best. They're okay. They're just not great because her wisdom sucks. Uh, notice uh, she gets an aura. And that aura actually extends then for 10 feet around her. Where she gives a plus 4 bonus to those same types of saves for compulsion effects for her teammates. So again, a helpful way to protect your team. And again, doesn't help if she's unconscious or dead, because obviously the aura fades at that point. Notice this last uh, uh, ultimate ability at tier 20 here. Um, this would be the reason that I would say that you could probably uh, do a one level dip out of this build. Because this is not that cool of an ability in my opinion. I'll explain it and then you know, I'll explain why I think that you might want to dip out of it. First off, let's talk about what it does. If one of your teammates, or you supposedly, I don't understand how this works, but if one of your teammates or you uh, falls unconscious or dies, then you have the ability to one minute to every time you hit that bastard that, that knocked your teammate unconscious to, to deliver a, a, a disintegrate spell effect equal to your paladin level, I believe, or a vindictive bastard level. And that literally is a decent amount of damage then. Now, of course, whether they make the save or not, it doesn't matter. Once the... the effect goes off that target is now immune to that effect for 24 hours from you but this could be a good way of like you you know it's one of those where you killed my father prepared to die kind of bullshit it's kind of cool but it's kind of like eh, for level 20 who gives a shit i mean by that point your teammates should not be falling down so fuck that uh, you know I, and usually at that level they're not falling down because they're unconscious they're falling down because they're fucking dead and screw that noise so this is why i could say you could probably dip out of this and not take it 20 levels of Vindictive Bastard. Having said that, you'd be Caster Level 1 less, uh, and of course you would be in Level 19 Vindictive Bastard when it comes to uh, abilities that's, that key off of your Caster Level or your Vindictive Bastard Level. That's going to be less now. So that is a thing. So there is still a reason to go 20 Vindictive Bastard, just so we're clear. But I could see maybe wanting to dip out of this and like going like a, a Unarmed Monk type build, like a Scale Fist Monk since your Charisma is already high anyway. And just monking it up with punching them in the face. And there's a lot more punches now added to the game, too. But having said all that, I'm still going to take this as a purist just to show you what she can do. But now notice this stuff down here. Solo tactics, which seems weird that they give it to you at level 2 since you don't have any solo tactics or any tactics at all. Or teamwork feats, I should say. But now here, you do get teamwork feats. Now first, uh, before we show you the fact that you have a retarded amount of teamwork feats and what we're probably going to focus on... Let's talk about that solo tactics, because it's not quite the same solo tactics that you remember. Unlike Jathel, the Inquisitor that's part of your team, who gets solo tactics for free, her version is in a toggle. This version is. This one you have to activate it, and you get it for a number of rounds equal to half her Vindictive Bastard level, plus her Charisma modifier. So again, the more Charisma modifier you have, 
the better off you're going to be. And again, the more levels of Vindictive Bastard you have, again, i.e. going all the way to 20, the better off you're going to be. So you can use it for many, many rounds by the end of the build is the point. But you have to activate it. Now, what does this do, though? It's the same as what Solo Tactics does for Jaythul in all regards. If you have a teamwork feat, the way it normally works is if you have the feat and someone on your team standing next to you, and they have the feat, then the feat kicks in. A uh, fine example is back-to-back, -back, one of the first ones we're going to grab. It's a plus two to your armor class. Okay, Now, you have to be standing next to somebody with that feat. Having said that, with solo tactics on, they don't have to have the feat. They still have to be standing next to you, so let's say it's her and a Miri front uh, lining it, right? So they're the front tanks now. Miri doesn't have back-to-back, -back, but you do at level three, let's just say. You activate solo tactics, and for that one round or however many rounds you leave that toggle running, you get the benefit of back-to-back -back because you still have a teammate near you. They don't have the teamwork feat, though. If they have the teamwork feat, like Jethel, this is why her and Jethel are going to make an amazing pair now, uh, then we can just load them up on these damn teamwork feats and make sure they have the same ones. So when they're standing side to side, they're fucking crushing it, right? Bonus to swing, bonus to damage, or not damage, well, yeah, I guess. A bonus to their uh, armor for sure, saves, all kinds of stuff that they can get bonus for using the teamwork feats, which is really, really cool. But again, in a pinch... If she's just near like your main character and your main character said, fuck teamwork feats, I'm all about myself, I'm a selfish bastard. She has the ability to just turn on that toggle, still standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, side-by-side, -side, and getting the benefit of all those teamwork feats for free, which is fucking cool. And again, that's why I say that if it wasn't obvious before, now it uh, comes into play here why a vindictive bastard is all about her fucking team. They literally have thumbed their nose at the god and said, you know what, fuck you, you don't care about my team. I do. They keep me alive. I'm more about them than I am about you. Now, the funny part of this, to me, is, again, conceptually speaking, is the fact that despite that she's clearly not a paladin anymore, she still gets these smite abilities. Again, they're limited and some other, you know, like the faded grace thing. Again, it's clear that the god still cares, but they actually have her listed when you look at her abilities and such. She's a goddamn atheist. <laughs> This <laughs> is freaking awesome. She literally has said, nope, fuck you. Gave him the big middle finger and I'm outy. Well, she still gets spells too, which again, it's kind of cool that the god still cares enough to say, you know what, you're still my guy. I, I, I understand why you're not a paladin and you can't, you know, hold on to the whole lawful good, you know, kissing my butt every day of the week bullshit. I'll still let you have a, enough of your abilities that you're not just a, a weak version of a fighter. And this, like I said, was the type of paladin that I'd love to play. So now let's actually level her up and, and see what we can do. Now, first, some obvious things. Uh, notice that intelligence and charisma are both odd, 13 and 15, respectively. Now, we only have five points that we can spend by level 20. And again, I still maintain that even if you not share, uh, if you don't shut off XP share, if, if everyone's getting the same amount of XP as you're leveling up, you can still finish the game with all the DLCs at level 20 by the end of the game. So again, I still build to 20. Some people say, though, that's just silly. Build to 17 or whatever, because that's probably where you're finishing. No, I, I'm a completionist. I do every fucking side quest I can. I go do the DLCs if I can. And again, if you do all that shit, you can get to 20 no problem by the end of the game. Now, having said that, that means, again, we only have five points to spend. Well, if we put one in Charisma to even it out, and one in Intelligence to even out, that's again, leaves us three. Well, where would you put the three? Well, I would obviously put them in Strength. It's the only stat that really kind of makes sense for having it end on a odd number. Having said that, I don't need 14 intelligence. I mean, sure, it'd be nice to get extra skill points, and I'll show you why here in a minute, but by and large, 13 is more than enough to do what I want. The charisma leveling it off to 16, that plus 3, that's important, because again, it's more spells a day, better DC check, not like that, it fucking helps you or anything, but it's more uh, use for your vindictive smite. Remember, it's based off your charisma, uh, and some other stuff here is going to be based off your charisma as well. So again, there's reasons to want this to be an a, a even number. And then at that point, so that's 16, that would be the first point I invest, and then four more points I'll put all in the strength, finishing it at 22. Now, if you did what I said originally, do 16, 14 for intelligence, and then three more in doing strength to make it a 21, why is that okay? Well, yeah, you're missing out on extra damage and a bonus to your swing. Sure, 22 is definitely better than 21. However, 21 is more strength than 20, and as such, you can carry more. So there's a reason to want to go to at least an odd number on strength. There's other exceptions to the rule, like having a dex of 13 or an intelligence of 13 or what have you. Unlocks feats. A, a fine example is that first feat that she has, combat expertise. It required an intelligence of 13. So again, she had what she needed. That's why I don't feel like I need to invest it anymore. And sure, I get more skill points, and that would be something, but she's not a skilled monkey. She's not someone that's like, you know, I really need to focus on these three or four or five things 
So she doesn't need a lot of skill points, which is good news because she's not going to get many. The other thing you need to do is when you're looking at this character, know that A, she's going to be a caster now, which is something you didn't have in the vanilla version of the game. And you're not going to get all those cool tower shield specialist feats here where she's like blocking you and everyone else in the front rank with her tower shield. So there is that. But she's a, a solid attacker now. She has good armor still. Uh, and with these teamwork feats, she can really motion shit down with or without someone that has those same teamwork feats thanks to solo tactics. Now having said all that, then we need to decide what to do with the actual feats up here. So now that's the trick. Normally, uh, in the vanilla version of Valerie's build, we did the typical Cornigan smash, dreadful carnage, shattered defenses type shit, battling display. You know, where she had enough charisma and strength where she was intimidating all the bad guys, softening them up for the rest of the fucking team. She rocked that shit. She can still do so. I'm recommending we don't. For a couple reasons. One, because the teamwork feats are fucking cool. And there's some cool shit in here that synergizes well if you gear up the right feats up here. So let's actually get into it, shall we? So now we have... Notice the, the laundry list of cool stuff here, like the Arcanus, Blood Rager, all these cool things are coming from my Call of the Wild mod. Uh, Vindictive Bastard is the sub or the specialty class. And again, it is not a Paladin. Be real clear, Paladin's way the fuck up here. This is a completely separate class. And again, still pretty damn cool. So we're going to always take your uh, Vindictive Bastard all the way to 20 levels. So what are we going to do? Well, now notice first they gave her one point in Knowledge World, one in Persuasion. And I disagree on both of those points for two reasons. One, she was trained as a paladin, clearly. So how is it she has no knowledge of lore religion? Yes, it's a green check mark, and yes, we'll invest in it. But the point's still the same. How come there wasn't one here? Why was it knowledge world? That made no fucking sense. Same with persuasion. Yeah, she's charismatic, so I suppose that makes sense for that. But again, to me, it'd be more, you know, athletics, mobility, something physical. She is a paladin type, after all. So something that keyed off a of strength like the athletics would have made sense. We're not going to even do that because I need perception. I'm going to put both points into uh, lower religion and perception from this point on. Uh, I could, you know, uh, spread them out so that you know, arcana, world, nature, and religion all get a point. Same with persuasion. And again, if we were doing the Corning and Smash build, you'd want to get that persuasion to six. So there's reasons to get this higher. Uh, you do even use magic device because your charisma is high enough that it's worth a damn. But to me, every character should have perception. Every character should have a specialty in something. Uh, and while she doesn't have any wisdom to really help out with lore religion or lore nature for that matter, thematically for her it made sense to me. And again, there is a reason to want lore religion. I'll show you that here in just a moment. Notice here's our faded grace. And again, I'm going to go great fortitude. Again, it's nothing more than defeat. Just a plus two to whatever save we want. So whether it's fortitude, will saves, or reflex saves, just pick one and run with it. Again, reflexes is a weak uh, point. Fortitude and Will are probably ev evenly distributed as being both very good, so either of those is a solid choice. And again, the fact that it adds to our stalwart, I would recommend either of these two over reflexes because, again, you'd like to have that damage and turn it now into zero damage. And I'm, I'm kind of cool with that. And again, we get solo tactics now even though we have no tactics. It's a dumb idea. I honestly should have made that where it just showed up at level 3 when you get your first team or feet. I suppose, I mean, for her it doesn't make sense. But if I played my own Vindictive Bastard, I could have picked up a teamwork feat here, potentially, I suppose. And then I would have had Sobo Tactics at level 2, and boom, I can use it now. So I suppose there is that. Keep going. Again, perception, or religion, every time, all the time. Here we are. Uh, let's do the teamwork feats first. We do the bottom ones. Now I want to show you the unavailable ones first because there really is a laundry list of new ones added as well. We're not going to go through all of them, but I want to show you some interesting points here. For first, Swarm Scatter. For each ally who has this feat is adjacent to you, plus one bonus to your armor class. So if you have the whole team of six there, right, and there's five people circling you, and all of them have this feat, or you have your solo tactics running, you get plus five fucking armor. How cool is that? And keep reading. As long as you have this bonus, you are immune to the Swarm Attack and distraction ability of rat swarms. Now, that's fucking money. And again, not amazing, but for free shit, that's free shit. Notice a target of opportunity. I'll point this out because Jathel is more of a ranged attacker than in this iteration, which seems weird to me. But whatever. Uh, if you have point blank shot and a high base attack bonus, you can unlock this one called target of opportunity. When an ally who has this feat makes a ranged attack and hits an opponent within 30 feet of you, you can spend a swift action to make a single range attack against that opponent. So it's free shot. Fucking awesome, right? There's other stuff in here like a, a Broken Wing Gambit, 
uh, requires persuasion for her. She could totally do this. And again, it's one of those where if you read the tooltip, it kind of makes sense. You use your persuasion, you're basically conning the other person, the bad guy, into thinking that you're wounded. So they get a bonus to their swing and a bonus to their damage until you attack or the end of their turn or whatever uh, happens first. But until that time, your allies, and this is why this is a teamwork feat, your allies get an attack of opportunity at the motherfucker that's swinging at you. And again, if they miss, just because they have a bonus to their swing doesn't mean they have to hit you. If they swing and miss at you, your teammates all still get that attack of opportunity on the son of a bitch and just beat them like a pinata. So you can see how much fun you can have with some of these newer things that they have going on here. It's very, very cool shit. Uh, distracting charge is another interesting one where basically if, let's say, Jathel charges this bad guy way the fuck here and I'm standing next to the bad guy. I have this feat, so does Jathel, or maybe I have this feat and I have solo tactics running. Somebody charges this person, bam, hits them in the face. Because they're next to me now, remember I have solo tactics running, I get now for my next uh, turn a plus two uh, for my next uh, turn for swinging at that bad guy because of the distracting charge. Their charge distracted, obviously, the, the bad guy in question, and it gave me a bonus to my swing for the next combat turn, which is pretty fucking cool. And again, you'll see a lot of these teamwork feats add either a bonus to your swing, a bonus to your armor, a bonus to your saves, uh, in some cases even like a bonus to your damage, which is respectable. It's definitely worth considering. So what are we going to grab, though? All right, so uh, for me, again, we got one, two, three, four, five, six of these. Am I seeing that right? Yes. So for me, uh, the ones that stick out, uh, obviously, uh, I like back-to-back. -back. Notice that we need higher perception, which I can actually upgrade right now if I want to do that. Uh, I'll get things like outflank. Uh, that's two. Tandem trip is going to be interesting. You need to, to trip feet to really make this work. Uh, whenever you attempt a trip combat maneuver against an enemy uh, threatened by an ally with his feet, you roll twice and take the better results. So basically, advantage on tripping. Right? It doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but trust me, that gets to be quite powerful when we talk about feats here in a second. Shield wall is still something that she's going to want, extra armor. I could do that swarm scatter. I could do shake it off for some extra... Um, Saving throw bonuses, uh, get my better co coordinated maneuvers. Remember, this in includes like your tripping ability. Uh, coordinated defenses, so I get better protection from being tripped or disarmed or all those dirty trick moves that they could do as a combat maneuver. So again, a variety of cool shit that we have to play with. And hell, she is a caster, or will be. So again, like shielded caster and all that shit that gives her concentration bonuses so that she's not distracted while casting her spells in the midst of combat. It's fucking cool. So that's still something we can do. But again, what am I going to do here? Well, uh, I'm going to do that tandem trip because I'm going to show you what you can do with it. Because of this bastard right here, combat expertise, whoop, we have the ability to grab trip. See that? Intelligence of 13, combat expertise, or kinetic warrior. Uh, and again, this was something that Valerie could not do because she did not have the intelligence. Now, yeah, you could have given her a TR, they gave her like a plus four or more to her intelligence, and therefore she'd have the intelligence high enough to be available for grabbing combat expertise, and then you could grab trip. But now, we can just start off at level three this way. This is literally in the first goddamn chapter. You haven't even fought the Stag Lord yet, so you can fucking start using this trip maneuver. And again, remember with Tandem Trip, if she has that solo tactics running and she's standing next to anybody, like a Miri on the team, or your main character for that matter, with solo tactics running, she has tandem trip. She tries that trip maneuver. She has the ability to roll twice on that motherfucker. Where if it fails the first time, she rolls again. And oh, oh now you pass it. Okay, so we do trip them. And while that doesn't sound like that big of a deal, a couple things are pointing out about a target that's been tripped. Remember, when they've been tripped, this is the same for when you get knocked on your ass too. You have better armor against ranged attacks because it's harder to hit you because you're prone. But you're easier to hit with melee attacks. So again, you have less armor against melee attacks because you're prone. So again, softens them up for the meleeers, right? Also, they can't attack when they're on their ass, but they can stand back up and then still swing, but that takes their movement. So they don't get to swing, 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 swing like they normally fucking do. They have to stand up first, then they can attack, and they only get one attack for doing that. But better than that, when they're standing the fuck back up, unless they have ways around it, and there is ways around it now, but unlikely for the bad guys, they stand back up, that's an attack of opportunity for you and anyone else that's within melee range, which means you, the uh, Jathel, um, maybe your main character, hell, it could be Amiri, I'll get an attack of opportunity and you're just beating that motherfucker like a pinata because he's standing the fuck back up. And we have ways of capitalizing on that even further thanks to this mod. So again, 
a nice starting setup for softening up targets. Keep going. Notice I'm getting a level one spell now. Right here. I'm getting my second Vindictive Smite. Uh, again, I'm going to push Charisma up to 16, level it off. Remember, that's going to give us a bonus of Persuasion, not that we give a shit. Uh, I can do like so. Here's my list of spells for level one spells. Not the best list ever, but Divine Favor, Solid, Challenge Evil is not bad. I like Bless. I like Bless Weapon better. Um, we could be a healer, but that's dumb. A Veil of Heaven as well, as well as Veil of Positive Energy are okay. Lesser Restoration is nice. Magic Weapon's decent. So again, there's some decent choices in here. So don't kid yourself. You're actually doing okay for yourself for a free caster uh, type. Now notice here we're getting our Gang Up ability. Again, boom, boom. Now what am I going to grab for a feat? Now, now first, remember we just grabbed Trip. I want to point out some cool ones to you. So here's Fury's Fall. Use your strength and agility to send your foes crashing to the ground when making a trip attack. Add your dexterity, which she does not have, to your CMB. So again, there's no reason to grab that one. I mean, if you give her like a belt of dexterity or whatever, that's a thing. But again, it's silly. Notice this new one. And notice the, all the uh, ones that have color associated with them besides this generic ruddy tan brown color. Um, the ones that have color are coming from the mod, Call of the Wild. So unsanctioned knowledge vindictive bastard is something we will grab, not right now. We'll grab it later, but look at this. You can get a level one, a level two, a level three, and a level four spell added to your spell book. And they come from either the Bard, the Cleric, the Inquisitor, or the Oracle spell list. And that's a lot of different spells that the Paladin spell list is what you normally have. We have a lot more shit that you can add here. It makes your character a lot more flushed out for what they can do. Now, I'm going to add this later. Uh, I would not do so... Um, I'm doing it now or doing it later because I want to show you what spells you could have picked up just as the Paladin or the Vindictive Bastard. And then we'll add to the list, okay? Other stuff that's of interest to me is like Toughness. Again, I, she's a front rank uh, liner still, so there's no reason not to have heavy armor. Hell, we can do Tower Shield Proficiency if you really want to get crazy. Uh, we can get more teamwork feats up here, which is kind of silly. Notice this one. Steadfast Personality. Add your Charisma modifier instead of your Wisdom modifier to your will saves, but only against mind-affecting spells. Uh, now, that means your will save is not better. It's only better for that instance. So when, when you pick this one, it'll look like it's broken, like it didn't do anything. No, it, it works. You just need to wait till a mind-affecting effect comes your way. Check your saving throw, and you'll see that you did get the bonus. Notice it's two things. Uh, it adds this to your will save. So again, will saves is still four. Against a mind-affecting spell, it'd be 7. See that? But you won't see it down here. It'll still say 4. When you check your combat log, you'll see the 7. Also, if your wisdom was negative, it would actually be um, negative. It, it would go down. Let's say your, your wisdom was a minus 1 over here. It'd be minus 1 plus 3. So it'd only go up 2. Okay? Just so we're clear. So it's added. It's basically combining your wisdom and your charisma, I believe, is the, the best way of looking at that. And again, with her wisdom being flat, nothing, it's not that big of a deal. But the point is, is that charisma bonuses are going to be really, really nice for you if that's your thing. And it is my thing, so I'm definitely going to grab something like Steph as personality, but we're going to come back to it. Why? Because I'm going to get spell vulnerability, take abjuration just because, and then I'll grab it. Now I get two feats for the price of one penalty. So I'll take that steadfast personality, because why the fuck not? Remember... Will saves and fortitude saves are going to be your cup of tea. If it helps you fucking take half damage, then now it allows you at this level to take no damage. You definitely want those to be high. Uh, from here, uh, notice some other cool stuff that shows up that are new, like shielded mage. Uh, you reduce the arcane spell failure of any shield you use by 15%. Again, not a problem for her because, again, while she can cast spells and use a shield, she doesn't have arcane spell failure because she's not an arcane spell uh, caster, right? So... New uh, feet not needed for her. Shield Brace, on the other hand, you can use a two-handed weapon size appropriate for you from, uh, from the pole arms or spears weapon group. So again, we're talking like uh, uh, spear, you know, long spear, uh, spear. I think falls in that category, not short spear. That's different. So we're talking two-handers. Uh, you could do glaives, uh, bardishes, and I'm sure I'm missing something in there. Trident, I'm sure, is in that list. Uh, and again, normally you can't use a shield with it. With this shield brace, you can see that. So you can use a two-handed weapon 
while also using a light, heavy, or tower shield with which you are proficient. I'm assuming a buckler too, it doesn't say so. The shield's armor check penalty, if any, applies to attacks made with the weapon. So again, if you're using a shield, now you're at a penalty for using the two-handed and the shield at the same time. But it still allows you to keep your shield bonus, which is fucking cool. So this is a new addition. Um, other stuff like power attack is a solid choice for her. Uh, I'm going to go towards the trip stuff, but there's another really good one coming up. Again, iron will, lightning reflexes are still there. Of course, we have an improved great fortitude still there. Um, endurance, distracting charges there. Again, your, your teamwork feats are still up here. We have, because we have combat expertise, we have the ability in high intelligence, we got disarm or dirty tricks, so the ability to basically screw with bad guys this way is still a thing. Um, artful dodge. Notice our dexterity sucks, so she doesn't have dodge on her list, but she can get artful dodge because her intelligence is high enough. Two things that this does for you. Well, three. One, bonus armor class only if you're threatening an opponent. If you're the only character threatening an opponent, you get a plus one to dodge against that opponent. Be real clear on this. Uh, the artful dodge also acts as the dodge feat for purposes of satisfying the prerequisite for requ you know, that requires dodge. So, for example, if you're trying to do like crane style, crane wing, crane repost, you have to have dodge first. Well, if you had artful dodge and your dexterity was crap, you could totally pull that shit off. That's kind of cool. Notice this last part. This is the really fun part. Uh, because your intelligence is so high you know, compared to your dexterity, uh, if intelligence is higher, you actually use the um, intelligence modifier instead of dexterity modifier for, or sorry, intelligence score instead of the dexterity score for purposes of dexterity requirements. So a prerequisite like, a, let's say you're trying to do two-weapon fighting, that would require a dexterity of 15, if I remember correctly. Well, your dexterity is 10. But if your intelligence was 15 and you had artful dodge, you'd be uh, available for picking up two-weapon fighting. You see that? So that's, again, another cool feature. Again, we can do weapon focus. Hell, we can do additional traits, and I highly recommend you do so. Uh, since I don't see my um, trip feet in here, uh, let's actually look for it. It's a very cool... Oh, no. It's a very cool ability, and I want to find it. Well, there's there's two. One that we're not going to get because uh, Vicious Stomp, because uh, we don't have Unarmed Strike. Or sorry, Improved Unarmed Strike. Uh, however, Harem has been changed. No, he's not a cleric anymore. He is a war priest, a specific kind called a Sacred Fist. That motherfucker gets an Improved Unarmed Strike. So with combat reflexes and Improved Unarmed Strike, Harem can now foot stomp people when you knock them prone which makes for a nice one-two combo. You trip him, then Harem stomps him on the fucking face as an attack of opportunity. It's fucking so cool. But that's not for you, because, again, you don't have the improved armor strike. But what could you get? Oh, uh, how about... Toppling Bash? No. What's it called? What's it called? Sorry, guys, they don't have these things memorized. There's just so many new things they've added. Um... Come on now. It's probably in the goddamn top. New fighting styles for monks and the norm vengeance and jabbing stance and all that uh, cool shit. Or jamming style, excuse me. Um, where are you at? Where are you at? Hurtful. No. Got it in hand. Ah, there it is. Greater trip. We need a bab of six. When you make uh, you make free attacks on foes that you knock down. So now watch this. You receive a plus two bonus on checks made to trip a foe. Bonus. That's awesome. This bonus stacks with the bonus granted by trip. Whenever you successfully trip an opponent, that opponent provokes attacks of opportunity. So I trip them. And if I'm understanding this right, I have the ability to attack them as a follow-up. So I push you down. Normally that's my entire action. But with greater trip, I push you down and then I fucking swing. And that's nice. Because, again, the tactical opportunity. So I, I still get a chance to damage you. We just need a higher bad to pull it off, which is something we're definitely going to do. Since we don't have to worry about that, then I can grab power attack now, and we'll do so. So we have our steadfast personality, which is our bonus to our will saves, only against mind effects. Uh, and then power attack, which means bonus to our damage. Not bad. Not bad. Now we'll get a teamwork feat. Uh, again... Here's our list. Now we have outflank. We also have back to back. If you want armor, if you want outflank, that's a bonus to your swing. I'd rather swing better, so a solid outflank here, but I'll get back to back as well. But a solid upgrade. Vindictive Bastard. More Vindictive Smites. I love all that. 
uh, from here, greater trips, even telling you that you want it. Fucking awesome, right? New spells, level two spells now. And again, look at your list. Weapon of Awe is pretty good. Righteous Vigor is not bad. I uh, like me some bull strength, even if it's short term. Uh, some of these don't work for you, like Aura Greater Courage. Um, requires you have the aura like a paladin. So they just cut and paste the paladin list. We don't have the order of greater... Uh, an, we don't have the feature uh, or the paladin's aura of courage. So we don't have that ability. Because of that, we can't use this spell. Or, or, I mean, you can pick it. It won't do you any good. But resist energy blade tutors amazing. Effortless armor is useful for you. Delay poison is decent. Bestow grace if you have a good teammate with a high charisma. Like the Elder Scions that I usually play. It's a fucking amazing ability where I give them like the paladin ability to use your charisma for your fortitude, reflex, and will saves for a, a short period of time. That's a solid, solid spell. But again, you see how we're building into a trip-heavy build and a teamwork feat-based build. Now again, I could do this just to show you massive points. Uh, and the way this works, by the way, is um, you would get with this in much intelligence. We're getting the backlog of ones that we've burnt up. But you won't get three skill points at every level. You'll get two, then three, and two, and then three, and two, then three. It's just giving us a backlog of all the ones that we've missed. So we're not doing that. So again, we're still limited to two every level. So in the grand scheme of things, if you wanted ten more points by the end of your build to spend in skills somewhere, that, that's a thing. Hey, man, do that thing. But I don't think it's necessary. I'd rather start pushing it into strength. I can carry more. We're going to be heavy down with uh, you know, the best full plate probably anyway, and a nice solid heavy shield and a nice long sword. So she's going to be carrying a lot of weight. So more strength is more damage, more uh, a better swing, all stuff that she'd benefit from. Cool. Vindictive the bastard. Got myself another teamwork feat coming our way. What are we going to do for teamwork feet? I think it's time for some back-to-back, -back, quite frankly. And that's a nice little armor bump. When you are flanked and adjacent to an ally with his feet, you receive a plus two circumstance bonus to armor class against attacks from opponents flanking you. So again, nice little bump. Notice that we need a perception to unlock that. And again, Jathal already has that, as you can see by the fact that it's listed right here. It's a nice addition, by the way, for that the, the devs actually added to the game. Where they actually show you who has the teamwork feet already. Oh, fuck yeah, we got someone that already has it. Sweet, so now we know to take the two of them out together. But again, we don't have to worry about that because of solo tactics. But I'll happily take that now. Now, is there anything else that we can do for our trip abilities? Let's take a quick gander. Again, here's Fury's Fall. Again, we don't have Dexterity, so it really doesn't do us much good. Uh, Unhindering Shield, this is a nice new bonus. You still gain the Buckler's Bonus Armor Class even when you use your shield... For some other purpose, watch this. When you wield a buckler, your shield hand is considered free for purposes of casting spells. No problem for us. We don't care. Wielding two-handed weapons, ooh, and using any other abilities that require you to have a free hand or, or interact with your shield, such as swashbuckler's precise strike, deed, or the weapon finesse feats. So remember, if your weapon finessing, you can't have a shield in your offhand. Well, now you could. It has to be a buckler, but so fucking what? Now, having said all this, go back to the part where it says uh, wielding two-handed weapons. Well, Brother Mune, she's using a longsword. Longsword's a one-handed weapon. Aha! Normally it is. If you have nothing in your offhand, you will wield a longsword with two hands, meaning more damage. Not a better swing, just more damage. And with power attack on, you're wielding it two-handed, so it's even more damage. So that's fucking awesome. So if you want to hit like a brick goddamn shithouse with Val, Unhindering Shield is a solid choice. Downside is you have to downgrade to a buckler. But there's a lot of really good bucklers in the game now, too. So again, potato patata. On you... Just wanted to point that out. It is worth grabbing. Toughness is a solid choice. Remember, I still like that Swarm Scatter as a, a teamwork feat, but we've got plenty of teamwork feats to come, so I can just grab it later. Strike True. New stuff. You can focus yourself as a move action. When focused, you gain a plus or a bonus on your next melee attack roll before the end of your turn. You only get to swing once because you're using your move action to do this, but a plus four to your swing. If you're if you're whiffing, 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 this plus four to your swing is a plus four to your swing. So you're only going to get one attack, but maybe that's enough to fucking land that hit. So sometimes these things are nice. And again, this is a new spell, uh, feat. This is a nice addition. Other stuff that might be of interest to you, uh, Shielded Mage, Pass. Shielded Caster, again, another teamer feat that we could pick up. We probably will do so. Or Shield Wall. Shield Brace, that's that big polearm one. That has nothing to do with our um, two-handed swing of our longsword, though. Uh, well, might we grab? I get Persuasive. Eh. 
Command of Magic, boring. If you're going to grab any of them, I'd grab Extend. Most of your stuff is buffs, and they have a duration, and therefore double the duration could be of value. We're not going to get Spell Focus, so there's no reason to grab Mage Tattoo. Again, I could get a buff to my Iron Will or my Reflexes, or again, another buff to my Fortitude. I get an improved Critical buff to my weapon, but we don't have Weapon Focus yet. That's probably the next thing for us to grab. Notice we have Hurtful. Uh, when you successfully demoralize an opponent with your within your melee reach with an intimidation check, you can make a single attack against that creature as a swift action. So if I try to scare them, then I'll get a swift action where I can swing and hit them in the face. If your attack fails and damage the target, it's, sh it's shaking condition from being demoralized immediately ends. So that's something. That's interesting. Furious Focus. Now watch this. When you are wielding a two-handed weapon or a one-handed weapon with two hands, like... Uh -huh. And using the power attack feat, which we do have, you do not suffer power attacks penalty to melee attack rolls on the first attack. Every other attack in that combat round still suffers. But that's not bad. But now look at the one right above it. Felling Smash. If you use the attack action to make a single melee attack uh, at your highest base attack bonus while using power attack and you hit the opponent, you can spend a swift action to attempt a tripped combat maneuver against the target. Now look at all the shit we needed. We had to be smart. Strong, have combat expertise. We had all that shit at the start. I've picked up trip and picked up power attack, and now we have a bab of six. We had a bab of six way the hell up here. So again, instead of grabbing greater trip here, I could have grabbed felling smash at this point. But I didn't. I'm okay with that, but I'm definitely grabbing that shit now. So literally, I swing, and I literally have to click this ability where I swing once. Bam! Because of that, I hit him with power attack on. He's immediately going to do a trip attack, or she is going to do a trip attack against the bad guy. Boom! Down on the fucking ground. Thanks to my greater trip, I have a bonus to that check. And thanks to trip as well. So I got a really good chance to trip that son of a bitch. And because of tandem trip, if someone's standing next to me and I have solo tactics running, or they just happen to have tandem trip as well, I'll get a, a double roll, uh, or advan roll with advantage, let's just say it that way, to try to trip the motherfucker. So I have a really good chance then of tripping that son of a bitch. And again, I still got to swing at him once. So I did damage, then I tripped the motherfucker. Then, where's the other one? Uh, this bonus attacks with uh, whenever you successfully trip an opponent, that opponent provokes attack of opportunity. So again, I should get an attack of opportunity on him too. So I'll, I'll hit him, I'll trip him, and I'll get an attack of opportunity on him, and so will all my team that's near the motherfucker for him being knocked on his ass. So that's an amazing one, two, three combo there. Just bam, 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 bam. Just fucking him over. So I'm happy to take Felling Smash. Keep going, you vindictive bitch, you. New spells, we're at level 3 now, and again, good ones in here that I like, and besides the fact that you don't have a god, you can still pray apparently, but Deadly Juggernaut's awesome for her, Angelic Aspect is okay, Greater Angelic Aspect is coming at level 4, uh, Delay Poison Communal though is a solid one, and again, it has nothing to do with the caster level, you cast this spell once and it lasts for an hour, so this is a nice one then to give her so you can free up a spell slot for someone that could really use that spell slot for something better, because an hour long protection from her is more than enough for the fucking team. There's other stuff in here that's worth a damn, like Communal Resist Energy, Greater Magic Weapon, two different versions. This one here is from Call of the Wild. It's the one with the sword pointing up, with a sword pointing down. That's the one that came from, I believe, uh, Eldritch Arcana. But again, they're, they're damn near the same thing. The difference being is the one with the sword pointing up. It will ask you if you're two-weapon wielding, do you want it in your main hand or your off hand? So this is the one that you'd want to slot because it gives you at least the option. Other than that, they're identical. Going Vindictive Bastard knows that we're getting uh, Swift Justice now, so we have a Swift Action now for buffing our team for our um, Gang Up ability. Boom, boom. Uh, from here, I think we're done with all our, our tripping ability stuff. That makes me happy. I can get that Unsanctioned Knowledge now, the Unhindering Shield, Tower Shield Specialist. You reduce the armor check penalty for Tower Shields by 3, and if you have the Armor Training Class feature, you modify uh, the armor check penalty and maximum dexterity bonus with tower shields if, it were, if they were armor. Okay, yeah, whatever. Not something we're going to do. Toughness is still a solid choice for us. Uh, I'll happily take... A lot of my magics now. A lot of duplicates, by the way. You'll see that we have multiples. Dazing, dazing. Elemental, four different kinds. Then this one here, which this is one, but you have to pick between the five. So we have magic, fire, electric, gold, and acid. Whereas this one had just the four. Let me get there. 
of the fire, electric, cold, and acid. And it's because one set of four came from a mod. This set that had all five came from a different mod. Uh, but they still work. So that's good news. Um, critical proof combat expertise. Let's look at this one. When you use combat expertise, which we will use all the time for nice armor. Let's just mark that shit right now. Um, well, reduce the number of your use of track from melee attack rolls and combat maneuvers by two. Oh, fuck yeah. So remember, this one gave us, for a penalty to our swing and combat maneuvers, uh, we got a bonus to our armor class. So it's a minus one to plus one flip-flop ratio. So that's a penalty to our swing. We don't want a penalty to our swing. So this is a plus two back. So if, it is, if it's minus two or greater, at least we're getting two points back. That's not bad, and we'll happily take that. Just make sure there's not something else of interest. Sir, sure, there's plenty of other things in here. Artful Dodge is still good. Blind Fight is still good. A weapon Focus for Long Sword is still a solid choice for us. Vindictive Bastard. Strength, nice bonus to Strength. And bonus to your attack as well as bonus to your damage and your carrying capacity. Get those two guys up. Oh, teamwork Feet now. Said I wanted that Shield Wall, and I meant it. Remember, it's a bonus to armor class, and again, if you're side-by-side -side with Amiri or Jathel, yeah, whether they have the feat or not, so low tactics solves that problem, and you still get that bonus, and you'll appreciate that shit. Vindictive Bastard, another Vindictive Smite. Uh, first one, I want to see if that's available to us. I'm surprised that we're not getting another extra Vindictive Smite extra smite ability. Um, let's do a quick scan down here if it's in the extra category. We're just missing something. Uh, extra lay of hands, rage, spell synthesis. Really, no smite? Hmm. I'm kind of surprised by that. I feel like we're missing something, though. Let's go through slowly. Nothing up in here. Nothing there. I know this is boring, guys. I apologize. But this is the part where, I, again, without knowing all the ins and outs, all the new stuff, I don't want to miss an opportunity to give you, like, an extra smiting ability. Crusader's Flurry. Now, this one's cool. Uh, it's not something we're using, but this is something for Harem. Notice how if you have Flurry of Blows, there's two different versions. But if you have Flurry of Blows and you have a lady's favored weapon in your hand, your meleeing weapon, uh, and you have weapon focus in that same deity's favorite weapon. So for Harem, his favorite deity is, uh, is Gorum? No. Yeah, if I can't remember. Anyway, uh, his, the, the deity of choice for him is um, one that has flail and heavy flail as their, their favorite weapons. So well, if he uses either of those weapons, and he has this channel positive energy, channel negative energy, or any of these abilities in here, and he has flurry of blows, which he does now, because he's a, a sacred fist monk, where he's... Or, or, Sacred Fist. Sacred Fist War Priest, where he basically behaves like a monk, where he punches punches, so he gets flurry of blows. Read here. You can use your deity's favorite weapon as if it were a monk weapon. Why does that mean? That means the flurry of blows works with that flail now. That's fucking awesome. That's a lot of fun that you can have. And again, it just depends on the deity you pick. Well, he has a deity already chosen for him. Grotus, there it is. And Grotus is a uh, dickhead, but he loves his flails, and there's some really good flails in the game. But again, you would lose out on Flurry of Blows. Well, not anymore, baby, because you got Crusader's Flurry, and he could totally get that shit. Uh, I really... That's vital. Star. I really feel like we're missing out on uh, extra smite abilities somehow. Channel Cleric. Extra channels. No. Nope. War Priest can channel too. A lot of cool stuff in here. Hexes, inspirations. No smites. I thought for sure, like rage, I thought for sure there's going to be a extra smite category. Or additional. Oh, maybe it's under the A's. Additional. No. It's up in here. No additional traits. All right, screw it. Uh, at this point, uh, again, Artful Dodge is still a solid choice. Uh, I happily though recommend getting weapon focus in that long sword of hers because she is sword and boardnet pretty solid now. Why not give her a bonus? Now we're up to level three spells. Oh well, no, take that after level four. We just don't have enough of a charisma bonus to act uh, unlock it. If your charisma bonus was plus four, you'd actually have one spell slot here. But this is level four spells now. 
This is your a decent list too. Again, restorations in here, holy swords in here, eagle soul is not for you because again you're not good. Be real clear on those ones. But death ward is decent. Chains of light is okay. Greater angelic aspect is solid. Um, I love me some. Uh, where did it go? Forceful strike. Oh, bestow grace of the champion is actually pretty fucking good again too. So we'll show you that one. But now that we've unlocked all four spells categories, I have a feat that I want to pay for here is our stalwart. Remember that feat that we talked about? Uh, I gave us like four spells, level one through four, from the bard, from the cleric, from the oracle, from the inquisitor list. That's the one we're going to go for right now. But what are we going to grab here? Well, shake it off is a nice bonus to your saving throws. And again, the more allies around you, the bigger the bonus, up to a maximum of plus four. And again, remember, normally they would have to have that feat for you to get that bonus, but we have solo tactics. Just leave that toggle running. Have Harem and Jathel, or Harem and Amiri, or Jathel and Amiri, whoever, up front with her, and she'll get a nice bonus to her saving throws. So that's not bad. We can also do uh, coordinated defense or coordinated maneuvers. Remember, this helps for your tripping ability. This one will help protect against the tripping ability. So again, both of those would be solid choices. I'll probably grab one of them here. But for here, teamwork feat is done for our actual feat pick. I'm going to go all the way down to... Unsanctioned Knowledge, Vindictive Bastard. Remember, in level 1, 2, 3, and 4 spell from any of those lists. Oracle, Inquisitor, Cleric, or Bard. And I'll show you how that works. Boom. These are level 1 spells. You can add to this spell book to, to pick, as you so choose, any of these level 1 spells. Now, notice the list. Pretty fucking inclusive. Bane, Command, Doom, Ear Piercing Scream for some auto damage, Flare Burst, Grease Spell, Hideous Laughter. Some decent choices in here, Obscuring Mist. Uh, don't grab Lend Judgment because you don't have the Judgment ability, so just be real clear on some of these things. I'm going to Invigorate from a Bard standpoint. That's not a bad little spell. Uh, but the one that sticks out for me for being fucking tits, Shield of Faith, baby. Get me some nice tanking ability up in this house. That's a solid spell. The fact that a Paladin or even a Vindictive Bastard doesn't have access to that one seems weird to me. But this one, remember, the one that steadily gets better over time. It can get plus two all the way up to plus five if you get 18 caster levels. She cannot. Well, actually, that's not true. I can show you a way to get to 18. You're just not level 18. You'll be level 17 caster level as a purist build. Level 2, there's all your new spells again. Blade Tutor being one of the best ones on that list. But again, here, new list opens up for you. And again, anything on here. You can get a summons now. Uh, we got some uh, AOE damage. Maybe you want to do some sneak attack love. Just be a dick. Savage Maw. Remember, we're not doing the intimidating uh, Corny and Smash Dreadful Carnage build. But if you had Savage Maw activated on yourself for many, many, many minutes, not only do you get a free attack based on your strength modifier, no less. Uh, if you crit, you bleed the target, but at any time you can end the spell with a massive roar and you intimidate everybody in a fucking circle, bad guys wise, of course. And that basically demoralizes or shakens the target. So again, you could still be that person that sets up the team for you know shattered defenses. Don't like that. Uh, another fine choice is the, a, a healing path where you just slap down a little glowing wall of light. Anyone on your team that stands in that light per round, they heal one health. It doesn't sound amazing, especially since it's going to cap out at like 17 rounds. But that's 17 healing per person times 6 people. 7 if you include the pet. You know, like a... a, a what the hell's his name? Ekandayos. Little doggy pet. Have all 7 of you standing on that fucking glowing path. And that's 17 healing max at the end of the build times 7 people. That's a lot of fucking healing for a level 2 spell. Uh, but... Let's just say it, mirror image for a front line and paladin motherfucker, mirror image or or uh, blurs up here too. That's another viable option. A bladed dash is a solid fuck you. You know, like run up there and smack him in the snoot. And notice this one here, your casting status charisma. So the higher your charisma, the, the better your bonus for hitting that target and allows her to basically teleport. Boom, shoot, you know, stab someone in the face. If you're going for theme. Bone Shaker, Burst of Radiance are all solid choices. One is literally like an auto-hit move for just random damage. And then the other one is uh, AoE, non-teammate friendly AoE, but again, solid damage and it fucks over evil targets. So again, if you want to still feel like someone who's holier than thou, but not quite the Paladin, Burst of Radiance is a solid choice. So again, there's a lot of really good stuff in here, right? Level 3, here's your spells again, and here's your new ones to choose from. Uh... In this list, not only is there like a laundry list of cool shit like slow and haste and all kinds of cool shit like that, uh, good hope is a solid choice for me. Uh, animate dead. I mean, maybe this is why you had a falling out with your deity because you decided to use the the fallen bodies of all the things you've been slaying and turn them into undead skeletons and you know 
wreaking havoc on his friends and you know, uh, allies, pissing them all off. And your, your deity said, hey, you're a dickhead for doing that. You're not a paladin. Well, I'm a vindictive bastard, so fuck you. I'm still going to do it. So animate dead. Have some fun. Channel Vigor is another solid choice. And again, hey, spell for yourself or any of these other buffs besides. Uh, I can make myself basically immune to being flanked. And again, for a tank, a frontline tank, that's fucking money. That's solid reason to fucking grab that one. Don't, and it lasts for a long time. Don't like that. We have, um, where did it go? Displacement. Think about a fucking frontline tank like her. With you know, full plate mail. Got a shield besides. And fucking all kinds of dodge and everything else going her way. And then you throw on something like her own ability to cast displacement on herself. 50% missed chance. Fuck you, bad guys. This is an amazing upgrade. A good hope is another uh, viable option, in my opinion. Bonus to your uh, save, you and your team's saves, attacks, damage, ability checks, skill checks, and it cancels crushing despair, and it lasts for a good long while. And again, multi-buff for the team. Solid choice, but I'd probably just use that on Lindsay. And again, you can do invisibility purge. Want to talk about weird? Think about being the frontline tank that has to do with invisible sons of bitches all the time. Not anymore. You have invisibility purge. Big Og and Aura kick it off of you that anyone that's invisible in that aura suddenly becomes visible. Whoopsie doodles. <laughs> we can see you now. Go kill that guy. You get the idea. There's a lot of cool shit, Sally. You only get to pick one. But I'm happy with this placement. I'm happy with Mirror Image and Shield of Faith. So far, we're making her like a goddamn tank. Well, what do you got here at level four? Again, all guns, good spells. As far as new stuff, Wrathful Weapon. Meh. Don't get virtuoso performance because you don't sing. So that's a wasted spell for you, so don't do that. I get stone skin, and that's not bad. That's not, actually pretty fucking solid. Hell, I get shadow conjuration, where I have just a shit ton of conjuration spells. They're all illusions. But I can, like, summon pets. They would be, was it, like, level three on down? You know, third level or lower. Basically, any kind of conjuration, you know, whether it's a summoning or a creation spell, level three on down shows up on your spell list when you cast this spell. Now, yes, there's a saving throw associated with a will save to disbelieve the illusion. But, like, if I wanted to create a pit, that's a, a conjuration spell. If I wanted to summon a, 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 a anim, or pfft, summon monster spell, I could do so. If I wanted to do summon elemental spell, I could do so. It wouldn't be amazing, but they'd be there. It's something that she could just cast on the fly. Kind of fucking badass. Again, this is a new spell added to the game. Uh, don't like that. Um, we got Rebuke, we got Serenity, Rigor Mortis. Uh, on this list here, the ones that I love, you know, I'm loving me some freedom of movement. The ability to make myself just straight up immune to paralysis or a teammate. Fuck yeah, for a long period of time, that's fucking money. I could teleport, but instead, let's go for some damage. Divine power, something that she should, you would think, as a paladin or a paladin-like person should have access to. She does not. What does divine power do? It's not alignment restricted, so that's your, your first key that this is a good spell. It gives her a, bonus to, a luck bonus to her attack rolls, to her weapon damage rolls. To strength checks, so like if you're using a strength check to break out of like say a web spell or like an ice cocoon or some shit like that, it's a strength check. Her strength is high, it's not the highest, but this will buff it as well. Strength based skill check, which is a fancy way of just saying athletics because that's the only strength based skill check out there. So she get a bonus to her athletics. Uh, maximum of plus six, she doesn't actually reach this. That's at the highest level, um, or level 18 on up. She doesn't get to cast her level 18, she gets to cast her level 17. But again, there's a way around that, I'll show you that. And then, of course, you gain a temp HP equal to your caster level, which again, for her right now, or best case scenario, is 17. So she gets 17 temp HP, which is not a lot, but it's something. And, wait for it, she gets another full attack at her full base attack bonus. Much like haste, but keep reading. This uh, additional attack is not cumulative with similar effects such as haste, or weapons with the speed special ability. So if you have a speed weapon or a, a haste cast on your character, you're not getting an extra attack. But we don't have haste cast on her right now, and there's no reason to believe that she will. And again, if she needs that ability just to swing, 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 she swings like a fucking champ. Why not have her swinging better? This is a solid upgrade. Bam. Now, uh, more strength for those. And again, I said I'd show you how to fake getting higher caster levels. So, by, like I said, by the end, she'd be caster level 17, and she'd have spell pen 17 as a purist if she went 20 levels in. But for additional traits, first let's take our emotional drawback of her being envious. And where is that? It's under magic traits. You see where it says magical knack. Read this little fucker. Uh, pick a class when you gain this trait. Actually, you don't have to. It's automatically included. Uh, your caster level in that class gains plus two trait bonus as long as... 
this bonus doesn't raise your caster level above your current HD. So we're level 17, but right now you're probably like uh, 15 for caster level. Or 14, sorry. So this would bring us up two levels for caster level is my point. So when we finish at 20, we'd be caster level 17 normally. With this, Magical Knack will be caster level 19. And I'll prove that to you here once we get to 20. And it'll be obvious because your spell pen doesn't change. So your spell pen will still stay at 17, but your caster level, as far as your spells are concerned, will be too higher. That's fucking awesome. Then, uh, let's point out a couple really good things here. First off, equipment traits. Uh, you don't want well-provisioned adventure anymore. If you're not picking this up at level 1, it's not helping you at all. So uh, Iron Liver would still work, and it's a bonus to your fortitude saves. And remember, we got a really nice stalwart thing going here. So again, bonus to fortitude, that's always a bonus. Nothing wrong with that. Family Heirloom, on the other hand, again... Unless you're picking it at level 1, this is less useful. It's still useful. Why do I say that? Well, you're not getting the weapon. Let's say uh, Longsword, just because that's her thing, right? So we go Longsword. She should be getting a free Longsword, you know, her family heirloom. However, she won't because she didn't get this at level 1. But because it's, it does two things. Not only does it give you a magic weapon at level 1, but it also gives you training in that weapon, so to speak. Let me rephrase. So if you can use the Longsword, which she can do, she gets a plus one to her swing because she's been practicing with it all this time because it's a family heirloom. It's not like you just walked over to your dad's fucking shelf and said, I'm going to be a sword fighter today and grab it and walk out. See you, Dad. No, you've been practicing with it in the backyard all this fucking time and you, you finally said, I'm going to make myself an adventure. Well, take the long sword, son. Have a nice life. You take the long sword and you walk out and start kicking some ass. It's a magic weapon and you get a bonus to the swing already because not only is it a magic weapon, but because you've been training with it. It's not weapon-focused longsword, but it's basically the same thing. It's not treated as weapon-focused longsword. Why do I say that? Because weapon-focused longsword would stack with it, and it doesn't unlock anything. It's not like it's a feat that says, oh, it, you know, like a weapon critical, you know, like where you get the improved critical for longsword, you have to have weapon focus in it first. This would not give you weapon focus in longsword. But again, we already took weapon-focused longsword. So again... We could take this. It, it's less useful in the fact that we're not getting a magic weapon out of it, but it still would be a plus one to your swing, just to point that out to you. So we're not taking that. Combat traits. Uh, you know, Blade of Society, sneak attack damage is less important at the end of the build, but again, could have been fun early on. Uh, armor expert. Remember, she is wearing armor. Again, armor check penalty could have been a thing. Not a big deal for us. I'd probably go Defender of the Society, give a bonus to your armor class. She's always going to be wearing medium or heavy armor. That's a solid upgrade for her. Don't like that. We could get a uh, uh, bonus to initiative. We could get death dodger where we get a bonus to our reflexes, which are pretty shit right now. Uh, we could get a uh, bonus to fortitude saves. Again, uh, oh, unlock class skills. A fine example being if we go social, suspicious, bonus to perception. See that? And it makes it a green check mark. I know it's not there, but watch this. Bam, bam. Green check mark, three higher. That's worth it to me. Now, yeah, it's at the end of the bill, but so what? I'm happy to take another three points in perception for fucking free. That's not bad. And I don't have to do it here. There's another category that it does it into. Um, is it race? Yeah, right here. World Traveler. You get to pick Persuasion, Knowledge World, or Perception. Well, Persuasion and Knowledge World, she already has the green check mark. See that? But the Perception, she didn't. So I could literally swap out of that one, like I said, and grab World Traveler Perception and still get that green check mark. So again, on you. Um, other stuff, again, faith trait. Notice that we got a variety of things here. We got birthmark, child of the temple. What was the one I'm looking for? No, exalted society, channel energy. She doesn't do that. Faith's favorite. Uh, whenever you are under the effect of a luck bonus of any kind, that bonus increases by one. Remember that uh, divine power we just picked up? Well, that was a bonus, a luck bonus to your attacks, to your damage, to your a variety of other shit. And it's a luck bonus. I think it capped out for her at, uh, at, because cash level 17, she only get like a plus five. Well, with this um, magical knack, she'll be cash level 19. That should be plus six. With this, it would be plus seven. See that? And again, that's a bonus to your swing, bonus to your damage. That's fucking worth. And again, that's uh, fate's favored. Uh, and we can do other stuff here. Notice that um, wisdom in the flesh, you don't have wisdom. But you do have... Oh, where is it? Uh, Cleaner Savant, you have high charisma. Now, if I wanted to replace my charisma modifier for knowledge checks, which we have not invested in hardly at all. That one, I didn't have any choice in the matter. And it's low because, again, our intelligence is low. 
if I wanted this massive charisma bonus here, so two higher, ring and ding ding. But again, you're probably giving her charisma gear. You could do that by grabbing Pointer Savant and picking Knowledge World or Knowledge Arcana. That's a thing. Uh, but I'm I'm happy with Fate's favor because again, we had at least two spells that are giving us luck bonuses: Divine Favor and Divine Power are both luck bonuses. And I think there's at least another one in there that's another luck bonus. So again, we're doing pretty good for ourselves. Well, now we got uh, Magical Knack. We got Fate's Favor. Well, what else might I grab? Well, uh, I saw it under here in Regional. She is slow. 10-foot speed increase all the fucking time is a solid buff. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm not saying that's a thing. Notice again, we did lose our Perception bonus because I took away that one. So I can just as easily go back and get that under Social Trait, like I said, under Suspicious. Hell, they've added this new one called Hunter's Blood. This one actually kind of thematically makes sense for Val. Hunter's Blood. Uh, it's like one of the following. Persuasion, Lord Nature, Lord Religion. You gain plus one trait at uh, uh, the green check with a skill. Uh, but also, uh, through your family's lessons, you receive a slight edge when fighting undead. Plus one to attack, plus one to damage, and plus one to armor class against undead. Now that's fucking cool. And again, as a vindictive bastard, this can be fucking played up as far as I'm concerned. Again, not convinced. Combat traits had plenty of good choices. Campaign traits, again, not my favorite choice in here. Same with like sword, uh, sword Sign where it says, oh, it gives you two different swords. It doesn't, because remember, you can take this at level one. You do get the bonus to the swing with the swords. Remember, long sword is the bonus to your swing. So again, I could make her a better attacker with her long sword this way. Uh, I could do a noble born, but again, I think she loses out on a lot of that shit. But there's this one Lebedug. Uh, let's see, anything in here? Nope, not a goddamn thing here that benefits her. I was looking for like a smite increase. So again, nothing in there. There might be one of these doofuses that gets like a bonus to this fireball. And that, that would actually be kind of cool. Um, no. Um, lay in hands, she doesn't have lay in hands. Snowball spell, I don't think they would give that to her though. Lebeda, talked about that already. Kavartorova. Doing sword and longsword deal extra damage, and you start with one of both. You will not start with one of both because you didn't take it at level one, but you would do the extra point of damage with a longsword. Again, it's a point, but that's the equivalent of two extra strength, kind of. It's it's kind of that because two extra strength would give you a plus one to damage, but it would also give you a plus one to your swing. So it's not quite the same, but again, it could be cool. Garess moves faster, but why would you take that versus taking the um, uh, original? Wanderlust, because that's a 10. I'd rather do that. So I'd rather her be fast. And again, I could just as easily go on, like I said, and do the perception one. Again, on you. There's no wrong answer here, but there's a, a ton that you can fucking do with, with just those three additional traits. And I thought that was kind of fucking cool. Now, let's keep pushing it. So we got last uh, teamwork feat. Go on our way. Uh, allied spellcaster, just so you can see here what we have. Plus two confidence bonus on level checks made to overcome spell resistance. That's awesome. If your ally has the same spell prepared, or known with a slot available if they are spontaneous casters, this bonus increases to plus four, and you receive a plus one bonus to the caster level for all level dependent variables such as duration, range, and effect. That's not bad. Uh, bond in mind, these are the new ones uh, that allows you to like share spells between your teammates or your pets. Um, Swarm scatter, we still haven't picked that one. Shielded caster, uh, this is for concentration checks. Uh, again, just concentration checks. So there's that and allied spellcast. Between those two, you could actually be really uh, concentration check proficient. Distracting charges still a viable option. Combat maneuvers, combat defense. I would take combat maneuvers so we can get that trip going even better. 19. Last vindictive smite. We're up to seven of them fuckers now. In our last feat official. And what are we going to take? Uh, we get improved critical for the longsword. Uh, Artful dodge I still maintain is a solid bonus. Blind fight's a solid choice. We've got, you know, again, no real wrong answer here. There's a lot of shit to pick from. Notice fear is focus. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before or not, but in case I didn't. Uh, this one, if you're using power attack, uh, using a two-handed weapon or a one-handed weapon with two hands, which we can do with the longsword, uh, you're using power attack, you add a massive penalty to your swing, right? This takes away that penalty, but only for the first swing in that combat round. So good, but not great. Uh, and again, we got all kinds of other good stuff in here that we could have, have snagged. But again, I, I'm fine with Artful Dodge or um, nah, I don't want a hindering. 
Infantry Shield. I don't want to use the Buckler. Uh, uh, the Approved Critical for the Longsword would be the obvious option. So that your Longsword is always the highest crit range possible. Again, up to you. Armor Focus, another viable option. Get extra armor for when you're wearing heavy armor. Get Artful Dodge, so that you always got a, a bonus to dodge against that one bastard. Yeah, I, I know Armor Focus, to me, would probably be better. But again, on you. But, yeah, again, lots of choices, no real wrong answer here. I, I'll just go with that thing pretty critical for the long sword and say, fuck it. You're good enough for me, good enough for government work. Now, go here, go there. Last point, again, if we did it here, you'd see I could actually get that to 20 and that to 20 and have eight more besides a dumping like persuasion. If intelligence mattered to you. If not, then you're probably going to go oops, strength. And then go bam, bam. And that's all you're going to get. But then it's solid strength, solid modifier, extra damage, extra swing, extra carrying capacity. And of course, you got your uh, vindictive bastard uh, ultimate ability, the ultimate vindication. Now, uh, let's take a look at this character. So, first off, notice we're getting four attacks. Right? Again, she has a bab of 20. That makes sense. Notice the power attack, minus six. We have a spell called Blade Tutor. new spell that literally can take away up to five points away but you'd have to be caster level 20 to do that we're not caster level 20 what caster level are we 19 not 17 19 and that's because of that magical neck remember we took that trait that gave you the plus two here okay you guys can actually, uh, that that trait can also be used by the way for those that want to go in like dragon disciple remember dragon disciples finish it uh, with a 10 10 split finish with a caster level of 17 and a spell pen of 17 that'd be a way to get them to 19 not amazing, but it's way better than 17. I think we can all agree on that. So again, this is decent, and this is a nice buff. On the spells that are here, and again, first let's just make sure to add our new spells. And mirror image, displacement, and divine power. So I'm going to put all those new spells in just to show you what they have. Uh, on this list here, bless is a solid choice. Not taking it, someone else can cast it. Bless of restoration doesn't have a caster level requirement to it, so again, that's not a bad choice, but I can pass on that. Uh, I'd happily take Blessed Weapon on the other hand, though. Uh, Shield of Faith, we already talked about it. Uh, Veil of Heaven, Veil of Positive Energy can be of use, especially for Undead. So we'll take and say Veil of Positive Energy could be a solid choice. Um, Challenge Evil, on the other hand, is fucking amazing. So is Divine Favor. Remember, that's our luck bonus. Remember, we take that trait that gave us another luck bonus, plus one. So instead of it being a plus three, best case scenario, it's now a plus four to your swing and a plus four to your damage. Only lasts for a minute, but so what? That's still solid. And you may say, okay, why did you grab Bless Weapon over Bless? Because Bless Weapon is just for you, right? Well, look what Bless Weapon does. Same amount of buff. It can be you or teammate, I should say that. But notice this part here. Um, the magic uh, weapon is considered magic for overcoming DR. Who cares? That's more important at the earlier levels because you're going to find a magic weapon for her ASAP. But it's considered good aligned for overcoming damage reduction. So if they have 5 DR slash good, it's now considered a good weapon. It would overcome it. But now this is the real selling point. All critical threats against evil foes automatically confirm the crit. So literally, so every threat is a critical hit. What does that mean? Remember your crit range is on a long sword of 19 and 20. If you roll a 19 or 20, that means you hit, probably. 20, definitely you hit. Let's, so let's just say you roll a 20. You definitely hit. Now the question is, did you crit? So you re-roll. And then it says... Uh, could, did you hit on the second roll? If you hit on the second roll, then it crits. You double the damage or triple the damage, depending on the weapon. So for a long sword, it doubles it. But if it's an evil target and I have this buff on my weapon, I roll, and if it's a 19 or 20 and it hits the target, they don't re-roll to see if we crit. We guarantee we crit. That's fucking cool. And remember, we have improved critical long sword. So instead of it being a 19 and 20, it's a 17, 18, 19, 20 guaranteed now. So it's an even better crit range. That still doesn't mean a 17 is good enough to hit them. Remember, if they have high fucking armor, and then you roll a 17, you'd be like, well, I crit, right? Nope. Because you still have to hit them. So if 17 wasn't good enough to hit, then you didn't crit, obviously, either. But on a natural 20, that's why I say if it's a 20, it's guaranteed that you hit the motherfucker. You hit them guaranteed, and then it would roll for a crit. But if he's evil, it's guaranteed to be a crit. But I still like this as a nice combo. So plus weapon is decent, and we got even better than that coming. Watch this. Now that we've got some tankiness with our mirror image, uh, we have our Bestow Grace. We're going to give that to a teammate. Uh, notice this one here. Nice buff. Doesn't work on you. Uh, it requires the target to be good. It doesn't really say that. It says it, but it doesn't. Watch this. 
With this spell, you can bestow your divine grace on another good creature. That's your clue. It doesn't have it in capitals, though. For a short amount of time. So what does this do? If they're good and they have a positive charisma bonus, they can add that charisma bonus to all their saving throws, just like a paladin. right? That's why it's bestow grace. So on my team, I have only one good person here. <laughs> as weird as it is, the good person, or sorry, one good person that has a positive charisma, and that's Octavia. She's got a charisma of 14. So if I cast this on her, she'll get plus two to all her saves for many, many, many minutes. And obviously you'd want to cast this on anybody who has a high charisma. So think about this if your main character was, say, like a sorcerer and had a fucking shit ton of charisma but terrible saves, bestow grace, baby. Now that massive charisma stat is useful again for you know, fortitude, reflex, and will save. Just boom for many, many, many minutes. That's not bad. But they'd have to be good. Make sure we're clear on that. Other stuff in here, you know, like I'd like Delay Poison, I love my Bull Strength. All these are solid choices, but eh. Uh, Blade Tutor, talked about it. Righteous Vigor is a new one, I want to talk about that. And then Weapon of Oss. So let's talk about these last three. So, Blade Tutor, again, that's the penalty to your swing from something like, say, Power Attack or Fighting Defensively or uh, Combat, um, what the hell is that called? Not Reflexes, the... Combat expertise. Remember the toggle we turn on? That's a penalty to your swing, but a bonus to your armor. Anything that's a toggle that you can turn on and shut off, that's a penalty to your swing. You can get some of that penalty back with something like Blade Tutor. Only one, so whichever is the highest. So power attack for her, for example, is like a minus six to her swing. She could get like four or five back to her swing. And I'll show you how that works. And that's nice because then she's not missing as often. So Blade Tutor, and it's a long buff. Now, having said that, now here's this Righteous Vigor. Again, friendly creature, doesn't last long. Um, every time they hit a target, successfully hit a target, they get a bonus to their attack roll up to a plus four. So they hit them, plus one. Hit them again, now it's plus two. Hit them again, plus three. And they gain temp HP up to a maximum of 20 temp HP. So again, each time they hit, they keep adding to it. Um, so again, really nice, right? But as soon as they miss, it resets everything back to zero. But again, it lasts for the full duration. It just starts back over again. So if you swing and hit, swing and miss, well, it's back to zero. Swing and hit again, swing and hit again. Now you're at a plus uh, two. So again, you're just constantly increasing your chances of hitting the target and getting some temp HP. doesn't last for long, but it's a nice fuck you to the bad guy. Then, the new reason that you want this one, Weapon of Awe. Nice buff can be cast on yourself or a teammate. Plus two to your damage. Sacred damage bonus. Not common, but keep reading. If the weapon scores a critical hit, remember we have another ability that allows us to confirm critical hits guaranteed if they're evil. If it scores a critical hit, the target's shaken for one round with no saving throw. And that's powerful. Now, of course, they could be immune to that effect. Remember, it has to be on an actual weapon, not an unarmed strike or a natural weapon like a claw attack or a bite attack. But basically, we're going to cast on ourselves for our longsword, and suddenly we're going to be crushing shit. It's just going to be fucking amazing. I use Weapon of Awe routinely on Ekendayo because it will work in ranged weapons as well for their arrows. So Ekendayo gets Weapon of Awe and he can start fucking uh, basically scaring targets left and right. Doesn't kill them necessarily, but if he hits them and he crits and he fucking scares them that way, it sets up shattered defenses for my meleeers. And again, that's a nice upgrade. So again, I appreciate that. It's solid damage for a long amount of time and I'd rather cast it on her than anyone else. Level 3, we got our Displacement. Again, I don't mind giving her Delayed Poison Communal because again, why not buff the whole fucking team because it doesn't matter what cast or level you are. It's a hour buff, period. So that's the whole team now immune, and I don't have to cast it from, say, like Harem or Jathel or Lindsay or Tristan. They can use their spells for other more important things because she can just waste this and be recover for an hour. Good job, Val. You know, shit like that is solid for me. Prayer, there's no save, so there's reasons to like it, but I'm not a fan. I like Resist Energy. I do like a Deadly Juggernaut, and, of course, I like my um, Greater Magic Weapon because this one is the one that lasts for hours. It's a nice buff to her weapon. Maximum for her, uh, since she's not going to get to cash level 20, plus 5 would be as high as it could go. She can get to plus 4, but it's stacked with the magic of the weapon. So if she has a longsword plus 1 and casts this spell on it, the, the plus 4 adds to it, bringing it up to a plus 5, which is as high as it could have gone anyway. So that's fucking cool, and that's worth having because then she's guaranteed then, in my mind, to always have a plus 5 weapon. That's nice. Doesn't matter. If, so if you find that longsword, that, hey, this is a great longsword. Oh, it's only a plus three. So what? You got a greater magic weapon. Buff it up to a plus five. That's fucking sweet. And it will last for a long fucking time. Hell, 19 goddamn hours. That's a solid, solid buff. 
And yeah, there's other stuff in here too. I'm not telling you what else uh, you could have picked. But this is a solid upgrade. This is a solid upgrade. This is a solid teammate upgrade. This is a solid protection upgrade for her. And we're not done yet. Got our divine power, massive upgrade. Remember, luck bonus. Uh, luck bonus right here. Remember, we got that, that trait that increases our luck bonus by one more point. So while she caps out at plus six, I believe now, thanks to our caster level 19 upgrade, plus six is to be where it should cap out. Well, with that luck bonus, she should actually be a plus fucking seven. That's a plus seven to her swing, plus seven to her damage, plus seven to her strength skill checks, plus seven to her athletic skill checks. That's an amazing upgrade. And of course, a bunch of temp HP and a full attack extra around. That's a lot of fucking shit from one spell. Doesn't last long, but 19 rounds is a good long while. Then, I like Greater Angelic Aspect because Angelic Aspect we could have grabbed back here. This one here. But it's not as good as this one. Why? Well, besides being greater, it lasts a decent amount of time still, but immunity to acid and cold. That's a big selling point. And some decent protection from fire and electric. And DR10 slash evil. And you get an aura that's deflection bonus for you and your team for saving throws and deflection against evil creatures. Again, a solid, solid buff for you and your team. So it's basically angelic aspect on crack. Amazing upgrade. You don't have to take that one. There's other good stuff in here. Here's bestow grace of the champion. Watch this little fucker. Channel the power of good and law into the target temporarily, giving it the power similar to those of a paladin. The target, so not you, um, gains immunity to disease and fear, and they add their charisma bonus to all their saving throws. But notice this part. The target has to be lawful good, and she's not. She's chaotic good. But if someone was lawful good, you cast this on them, like, like say your main character just happened to be lawful good and high charisma. Cast this on them. Immune to disease. Immune to fear. Massive saving throw bonuses for not very long, but so fucking what? So this is a solid upgrade, but it's very limited. Death Port is a solid upgrade for her. Eagle Soul would have been a solid upgrade for her because it's a, a personal effect, but here's the downside. She's not good. Uh, see, non-good spellcasters like her would actually become sickened because she's neutral or staggered if she was evil. She's not, but she is sickened by this spell, and that's a bad idea. It would be a solid buff, though, if it weren't for that. If you could convince her somehow to be lawful good, I don't know that's a thing, but if you somehow could make her lawful good, this could be fucking amazing for her. Don't like that. Uh, other stuff that's in here that was of value. Forceful Strike could be decent. Um, I'm not really sure about Oath of Peace. I've never seen that one before. Death Ward that we already talked about. Change of Light's not bad. Again, you're not the best at casting spells, but notice no spell resistance for that fucker. That's not bad. And a paralyzed target's a paralyzed fucking target. That could be useful. Of course, Restoration's in here. Break Enchantment's in here. we got plenty of good things is my point. So you got a lot of good stuff going for you, but I'd definitely go in for that Divine Power and that Death Ward for sure. Now, having said all that, let's just quick rest up just to show you what I mean. And items and equipment. Oh, what are we going to get for her? Let's just get full plate. Don't get anything that has a, you have to be a paladin to wear it because you are not a paladin. Be real clear on this. It will not let you equip it. Um, but like the Onslaught armor, this is still made for Valerie as far as I'm concerned. Look at that shit. Plus 8 to goddamn strength, and it increases her ground speed another 10. 20, excuse me. Oof. Yeah, the armor's 10 less, but with Wanderlust that negates that, and then another 20 from the Onslaught armor itself. So she's moving at a goddamn 50. She's a goddamn beast. Look at that fucking armor. And that, before we even give her a heavy shield, that, that, that's worth a fucking damn. You give her something like, um, uh, enemy shield. That's a ring. Ancestral Dwarven Shield's usually a good one. Child of the Wind's another really good one. Uh, and then we do something like, uh, Child of the Wind, because it gives another 10 for ground speed. She's zipping around at a fucking 60 now. And it's a pretty good goddamn armor going in there. And we have yet to cast a spell on her. Uh, I don't like that. We have the Ancestral Dwarven Shield. You can get this one super early. It's decent armor. It's only a plus four versus plus five like Child of the Wind. But uh, let's get DR2 slash dash, which means it's not overcome. She's always lowering physical damage coming into her by two at every attack. That's not bad. And there's ways around that, of course, too. You give her something that buffs her uh, stats. Certainly Charisma. Khan would be the one that I would care about. Of course, Strength. And that's good enough for her. And she looks fucking awesome. She's got decent armor on. She has spells, which is fucking amazing. 
Uh, and she, her, as far as her abilities are concerned, that's another the reason I rested. Her abilities, just so you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, of course, you want coup de gras and you want fighting defensively, but you want to make sure your power attack and your combat expertise are here. Notice we have Felling Smash, we have Trip. Felling Smash, of course, was after we grabbed Trip. Uh, so make sure you're using the right one. Here's our Vindictive Smite. These two abilities we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, we have our Gang Up ability, but once you get Swift Justice, I'd probably take that one off the tray because that's the better version of them. Uh, you have Solo Tactics, of course, and at that point you just want to put in like random shit. Now, on this list, our Vindictive Smites, you see we have seven. The Swift Justice, again, that's our ability to, um, after we Vindictive Smite somebody, we want the whole team to get a buff. That's what Swift Justice is about. Or Gang Up, the earlier version. Of course, Solo Tactics is a toggle. You see that? And again, you got 13. Why 13? Because it's half your Vindictive Bastard levels. So we're level 20, so half of that is 10. Where did the other three come from? Your Charisma Modifier. So you're 13. So if we get stuff that, of course, pushes your Charisma Modifier higher, when you rest, that 13 will go up. So you can probably expect that to be at least a, a 15 to maybe even a 17, somewhere around there. That's not bad. Uh, and then from there, uh, I just throw those down in there just to have them. But notice that these ones here, these are new abilities added, sort of. This one was always in the game to read Affliction, based on religion. That's why I've been pushing more religion. You may have wondered why. Here's one of the reasons why. Notice that this one is also now added to the game thanks to this mod. Treat Deadly Wounds is another one you can use. You can use either of these once a day on a target. So let's say I've been poisoned. I would do this one to try to cure the poison. If I have a high lore religion check, I have a good chance of passing that and curing him of the disease or the poison. That's what you basically did with that one. And you'll see this little icon under here to let you know that you tried. Even if you failed it, you tried. That means he can't be tried again until tomorrow. Okay. So this one here, same general principle. You can use it on someone that's wounded. You can heal them, but again, it's a lore religion check. It's how you basically treat wounds, if you will. You're basically bandaging them up, if you will. So it's a, it's a heal spell without being a heal spell. You can use it any number of times a day on anybody, or on everybody, but you don't use it once a day on a person. Why? Because when you use it on them, whether you succeed or fail at that check, they'll either heal or they won't, but that icon will go right here. It'll look just like this. So again, you have to wait another 24 hours. So that's why you give it to the person like say a harem who has like a fucking shit ton of lore religion and high wisdom he would have the best possible check let him do these things but if he's not on the team and you have the vindictive bastard remember i've been pumping her fucking lore religion it's not uh bad at 22 it's not amazing again it could be a lot higher if she had a better wisdom but again give her a hat that gives her more wisdom that'll make that go higher too just saying there's reasons for me to want to do that and again thematically I, I speaking it like still that. made sense that she followed religious beliefs. Doesn't mean she believes in the gods anymore. She knows they exist. She just gets fucking spells for fuck's sake. So she knows that they're there. She just hates them. So again, I'm cool with her knowing about religion. It's just, she's probably not the best person for it. Um, it just felt weird to make her do something like Knowledge Arcana because that's not her shtick at all. But again, uh, Felling Smash versus Trip. Remember, once you have Trip, you can click it, click a target, and they'll trip them. Like so. Combat maneuver trip. Obviously, you do this against the bad guys. So there's a CMD the, from the target. Every target CMD will be different. Notice that you have a modifier. We're fucking crushing it at a goddamn 34. I don't even know what makes that 34. I want to say cast your character level plus your strength plus something else. So we got a lot of nice buff right there. But then we roll a 1d20, add it to your modifier, and if it overcomes the CMD, then they trip. That's the idea. Oh, assuming they're not immune to trip. And again. That's trip. But notice if I did felling smash, I would actually click this, hit a target. Which of course can't do it against him. But I'd hit a target uh, with felling smash. So, if, uh, so what does it say? It says if you use the attack action to make a single melee attack, at your highest base attack bonus with my power attack on, which is always on, I swing and I hit that motherfucker. As a swift action, I'll try to trip this son of a bitch. And then uh, again, I'll get a bonus attack because of all the other feats that we've picked up for tripping. Same with anyone else that's near me. So that's why it's really, really nice that we've built for a nice trip build. And then if we want to go crazy, I'll do it in a separate video, but Harem, he is no longer a um, cleric. He is a sacred fist. This is a uh, subclass of war priest, where he's using his fisties, punchy punchy style, all monking it up. And he's fucking awesome. Really very fun, I must admit. Uh, but because he's an unarmed striker, 
he could get the um, the vicious stomp ability, and you need improved unarmed strike, which he has, and you need to have um, like a specific amount of bad. You need combat expert, uh, not expertise, combat reflexes. So as long as I give him combat reflexes, and he has that unimproved unarmed strike, which he does have at default as the type of war priest that he is. He can grab the feat called Vicious Stomp, which means after someone gets tripped on the goddamn ground, I again, like uh, this, <laughs> if he was standing near them, as soon as he fell on the ground, Harem would do a fucking attack of opportunity and stomp him on the head. <laughs> it's just fucking cool, man. Just saying. It, you could have some serious fun with this, and I, and I love the way the modder has changed the characters. So again, just to briefly say, he's a Sacred Fist. She's now a Vindictive Bastard with new stats here. She's still a uh, barbarian, but no, she's an invulnerable rager, a different class of barbarian, which is fucking cool, and they probably shuffled her stats a little bit. Uh, my personal favorite is, in fact, Octavia, when you get her, she's no longer a rogue. When you used to pick her up, she had to be level two. She was a level one wizard and a level one rogue. The modder said that's bullshit. So they said she's a level one exploiter wizard, which is a different kind of wizard, new, thanks to this mod, uh, and that's when you pick her up. At level one. Now she may be two levels in. By the time you pick her up, you may be able to level her to level two immediately. But there is no guaranteed rogue level one anymore. I went that way because again, I was still going to take her arcane trickster. But you don't have to. If you wanted to keep her exploiter wizard, you could take her all the way to twenty, baby. And I thought that was cool. And they changed her stats dramatically. Her dex, for example, is kind of crap. Her intelligence is through the roof. I think that was normal. The charisma is decent. And again, that's the stat she cares about for being your advisor. So that's fine. But her dex uh, used to be much better. I want to say like a 17. Uh, and her con used to be much worse. It used to be like an 8. They're like, fuck that. So they gave her a con of 12, which is fucking cool. So again, for what she is, she's very, very good now. And I, I appreciate the fact that they changed that up. Uh, and not just her. Uh, Jethel, while she's still an Inquisitor, and there's a lot of changes to Inquisitor, so what? She's still an Inquisitor proper. But look at her stats. They're definitely different. She never had a dexterity of 20 fucking 2. That's awesome. She's actually built, and, and you'll see with the fact that her very first feat that they gave her was point-blank shot. She's clearly now a ranged attacker. She still has her scythe. She still has strength to wield that scythe. But you're probably better off switching her to a goddamn bow or a crossbow or some shit and fucking taking her in the back ranks. And while you may say, but she's a teamwork feat person, because look at all the cool teamwork feats she gets for free as an Inquisitor. Shouldn't she be in the front ranks with Valerie? No, because remember, she A has, where's it at? Solo Tactics. And unlike uh, Valerie, which has a toggle, this is always on for her. Uh, but she can stand in the back ranks and help uh, Jubilos and um, Ekendayo let them get some fucking teamwork feats. There's some good ranged teamwork feats now that they've added. So again, those three could be the fucking back rank and just fucking peppering people with bows and crossbow bolts and everything else, man. Just having all kinds of fucking fun. So I dig this, and I think if you guys are interested, I will do one for each of the new uh, characters. Because they are different. Even with them being extremely similar, I'll still show you what, what could have been happened at level 1 and how I would build them. So if you guys are interested, post down below or just like the video, and I'll know that this is something you guys are interested in. I think this is a fun character. And again, when you gear her up, make her tough. She's going to swing like a brick shit house. And just to show you a, a, a quick spell yeah. use here. Um, what do we got? Let's give her uh, Shield of Faith. Bless weapon going. Uh, we'll do the mind favor later. Here's image. To bestow grace, but I'll do that on Octavia. Play tutor for herself. Up and evolve for herself. Let's grab ourselves to lay poison for the team. Placement. Notice the um, greater magic weapon. I have two choices because I grabbed the sword up one. This is the one who call the wild because this is why you want this one. Because here's for your uh, main hand, for your off hand. See so the top of the tooltip there? Greater magic weapon off hand. Greater magic weapon. This is the one you want. And the only reason that matters is because if you wanted to do like two weapon fighting, well, we'll give her death ward. Sure, why not? Greater angelic aspect, and I'm not going to do divine power or the other one. I want to show you why. First off, with, and we still have buffs still to go, so we're not done yet. But look at what we've done here. So here's our blade tutor. See the plus four. 
that's because of this minus six. Okay, if it was minus three, it wouldn't go plus four. It'd be minus. It'd be plus three because it only goes as high as it can go, no greater than the number that's up here. But there's two numbers that we have. Not only do you have power attack, but she also has the ability. We didn't turn it on for some reason, or it's not kicking in. That combat expertise is not kicking in until we go into a fight. But uh, if we did, combat expertise would also be another penalty. It doesn't double stack. You don't see blade tutor twice. It just doesn't once. So you're getting best case scenario for her plus four, and I'm fine with that. Uh, plus five would be she'd have to be cast for level twenty. That's fine. But again, remember, that's a minus 6 plus 4. That's basically saying that power attack's only a minus 2 now. But remember, that's plus 12 damage. So that's a lot of fucking damage for just a minus 2 swing. Fuck yeah. Blade Tutor for the win. That's a nice new spell. Notice that our damage also went up. Uh, I, I don't like that they don't have a breakdown of your damage, by the way. Uh, for anyone that has uh, the ear of the mods, I love how this is, is explained. You know, like, you can add it all up, and, and, and within reason, this should add up to your total. You should see that. I wish they would do that for damage. I really think that'd be an easy enough thing to do where they'd say you're getting a plus one from this, a plus ten from that, a plus so you can monitor it and say, oh yeah, oh, yeah, that's because of my strength. Or or oh it's because I'm wielding my, my longsword one handed and now I'm getting extra strength bonus. Because right now with a strength of plus ten, she's getting plus ten damage. Because of the power attack we saw over here, minus six, that's twelve more damage. So ten and twelve is what, twenty two. So where's the six more coming from? Well, we made it a magic weapon, did we not? Plus four. That's another plus four. So we had 22 and four more, and now we're at 26. Where did the other two come from? See, weapon of awe. That's another two points of damage, remember? Two sacred bonus on all damage rolls, and the target is shaken for one round on critical hits. We have our blessed weapon bonus. We got our good aligned weapon. Uh, and our static temporary plus four enhancement that came from our... Um, greater magic weapon that we cast on it. So again, solid, solid buff, solid, solid swing, solid, solid damage is my point to you. And again, that's a lot of fucking damage. That 1d8 is, who gives a fuck? It's the 28 that's like, yeah! And if you think that's impressive, uh, switch her from that to two-handed swinging. Just to make sure it's refreshed. See the 39 now? Where'd that come from? It's not 10 anymore, it's 15, because she's two-handed uh, two wielding it because she can choke up on that fucking bat, so to speak. And the power attack, instead of it being uh, minus 6 plus 12, it's minus 6 plus 18. So 18 and 15, what is that? That's 38, no, wait, 33. Uh, then where did the other six come? Four from the magic weapon, the greater magic weapon. And then the other two came from, again, weapon of awe. So if she needs to just do some fucking wreaking hell damage, switch to one hand or one weapon like this and no shield. And she crushes it. But if you really need the extra protection, and, and maybe you can sacrifice some of that damage because you really need that protection to make her tank like a boss, the damage went down. But again, up to you on how to do that shit. And I still maintain this is a solid, solid build. Now, in this video, I haven't been keeping track of time because I'm just having fun with it. Uh, but this is a solid, solid character. Last thing to point out, uh, let me do a quick save to do this because uh, there's two different spells I, I, I want to show you. Uh, one spell was Divine Favor. First, uh, just as a reminder, we're at 28 damage to 34 for your swing, right? So do Divine Favor. Uh, pause that shit because it only lasts for a minute. See that? Why is Divine Favor plus 3? You see how it says Fate's Favored below it, two levels right below it, where it says plus 1 from Fate's Favored? That's that trait. Because it's a luck bonus. Plus 3 and another plus 1. So that's nice. And then again, it's only a minute. And it starts off as a plus one, plus one. So it's a plus one to your swing, plus one to your damage when you start off with Divine Favor. But then as you level up, it goes from plus one to plus two, plus two to plus three, and where it caps out. But because of that trait, that bonus goes to another plus one. That's another plus one to your swing, plus three more from the Divine Favor, and plus four to your damage. Three from Divine Favor and one more from the, the trait. So that's another way to juice up some damage. But that's the weak version. That's Divine Favor, the low level spell. The big spell, the granddaddy of them all, was the Divine Power. Remember, we didn't have access to it, but we got access to it because of our ability to, to pick from the, I'm, the I'm cleric here. spell list, remember? So again, just to remind you, we've got 34 here and 28. And the spell we're looking at is Divine Power. Ready? So we do Divine you Power, you level 4. Mama. 
Again, doesn't last long. Lasts longer than the other, at least. One round per caster level, and your caster level 19. But how is our bonus? Plus 6. It should be plus 5, but it's plus 6 because of that trait. Remember the um, uh, magical knack? We should be caster level 17. That would be a plus 5 here. But because we're at caster level 19, we actually juiced it all the way up to its max, which is plus 6. But we got another 1 because of that fate's favored trait. So now we're actually up to a plus 7 for our swing, plus 7 to our damage, plus 7 to our strength check. So if you did a strength check where you get a plus 10 to it, technically you're getting a plus 7 more on top of that now. So you're at a 17 for your strength check with this character with divine power running. We also get an extra attack. Remember the, the free attack? We also got temp HP equal to our caster level. Caster level 19. You can see it right there. Then our athletics check went up. Uh, although it's not giving us a plus 1 on here. That seems weird. Kind of hoping that'd be a plus seven. Oh well, it's only a point. I don't really care. But it, the point is, is divine power is a really, really good upgraded version of divine favor, and they don't stack, so you can't cast both and, and think you're awesome. Um, having said that, like I said, I usually keep just for a last a little bit of knowledge here. When I play a character like this, I usually keep a divine favor in my back pocket and a divine power for the big fights. Divine favors for like you get jumped in the forest. Well, I don't want to. I want to have a nice bonus to my swing and a bonus to my damage. I don't want to use divine power because only slot it once, and because I don't have many spells per day. But I can cast divine favor, and that's good enough because it's still a plus three, or in our case now a plus four to our swing and to our damage, and that's close enough. And for a minute, that's a quick skirmish. Divine favor, choppity choppity. Bad guy's dead. Proceed to the Funkin' dungeon, where you will activate divine power and go to town, killing all the bad guys that way. So again, I think it's a solid build. I think for the character of, of what we've done, just to, to reemphasize our, our points here, we start off with shield focus and combat expertise, which we did not have a choice in. We grabbed a great fortitude, trip, uh, where's that? Tandem trip at the same time. We got spell vulnerability abjuration at the same time we get that spell vulnerability. We picked up steadfast personality and power attack at the same time. Uh, so that's not bad. And then here we got outflank, greater trip, back to back, felling smash, improved combat expertise, shield wall, weapon focused longsword, shake it off, and unsanctioned knowledge for the vindictive bastard. We got our additional traits, which were uh, we took envy as an emotional drawback, we took a magic trait called magical knack. A faith trait called Fate's Favored and a regional trait called Wanderlust. Then um, we took um, coordinated maneuvers, so we have an even better chance to trip. And then we have improved critical longsword at the very fucking end here at 19. A solid, solid character with a little bit of loving in for gear, strength, con, and charisma. She will do what you want her to do. She'll be tanky as hell. She has some spells, some nice spells for herself and the team if needs be. Again, I love the fact that she can cast delay poison communal for a fucking hour on the team because that frees up my other casters to, to cast the important spells you know stuff that can protect a team with like resist energy or protection from energy or maybe they just want another bone shaker or bone shatter or, you know whatever spell they could get at that level and i think that's cool she's now a very good teamwork companion so it works well with jaythel but doesn't have to be because of her solo tactics and I think you guys will like this build. But with that, my name is Brother Mute. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me if you guys like these videos. Do you want me to show you what these other characters with the new builds that came from the modder, what I think would make a good build? If so, just like the video and I'll uh, start doing the other ones here later this week. But with that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.